Hi, I'm Jamie Miller, Registered SQF Consultant at Kellerman Consulting, and you're watching the Risk Assessment video series. Kellerman Consulting releases weekly training videos and important tips and strategies to help companies keep up to date with the latest food safety regulations. In this episode, we are going to look at how to perform risk assessments in a food or food packaging facility, as well as the types of risk assessments the safety and quality personnel may perform as they document those assessments. As we discussed in our previous episode, risk is something that we live with and manage every day, but we are not required to document that risk or identify how we will address it, the elevated risk where we find it. For food and food packaging facilities, we do have requirements to determine and document risk and to reevaluate those risk assessments frequently enough to make sure that they are accurate as the personnel, products, and the operations in a business change. We have previously discussed required risk assessments for suppliers in our video series on supplier approval program. But here, we are going to expand upon the areas of operations which may benefit from or require a risk assessment. First, Let's take a look at the parts of operations we want to focus on for performing these assessments. When we think about risk in the facility, you may find that most of the areas of the facility have risk, and it is safe to assume that everything that can go wrong in a facility will go wrong eventually. And truly, risk assessments can be performed in every room or activity in your facility, but having a giant stack of written risk assessments is not practical in most operations, so we can narrow down what we're talking about to the highest risk areas. If your facility has an up-to-date hazard analysis as part of a food safety plan, that most likely has severity and probability assessed at each step in your process and the critical safety steps, whether it's a critical control point or a process preventive control, are likely rated as high risks since they are critical. If the facility is a food packaging facility or a storage and distribution facility, there may not be a food safety plan, so there may not be a hazard analysis in place since they are not required to develop one per the regulations. For food factories and manufacturing operations, food safety plans and hazard analyses are required. If you are in a food manufacturing or processing facility and your hazard analysis doesn't address actual risks, we strongly recommend adding a risk assessment column into the hazard analysis before any other risk assessments are started. Beyond the hazard analysis and the previously discussed supplier risk assessments as part of the supplier approval program, we should be focusing on areas of the facility or operations where repeated or regularly occurring non-conformances have occurred. An example of this would be a water main or pipes that have been found to leak multiple times, or a roof leak that moves to a different location each time a repair is attempted. In both of these examples, the presence of water in the facility may be a significant problem or it might not, depending on the proximity of water to sensitive materials and whether pooling water occurs in a high traffic area. Regardless of whether we identify events like this as major risk, minor risk, or no risk at all, when we write down what the situation is and identify whether it is controlled or not, we are performing the risk assessment. The reason why we want to start with a persistent or repeating issue is that it's a real and current problem which needs to be addressed. Also, that problem, which has happened more than once before, may happen during a visit by a potential customer, regulator, during an audit, and showing the outside party that the facility has already considered these issues and determined how significant it actually is addresses that issue. The potential client, regulator, or auditor may disagree with the assessment presented to them, but there can be no doubt that an assessment is in place and that goes a long way to demonstrating control in a facility. Mm -hmm. 
After we have planned to write risk assessments of repeating or persistent issues that occur in the facility, the next areas to consider are unusual, undesirable, or unrepairable features of the facility. We tell our clients frequently that businesses oftentimes are working with a pre-existing facility that can be aged or outdated. They rarely have the modern, top-of-the-line facilities they want, and if they just had a billion dollars, 200 acres of land, and unlimited time, they could have the dream manufacturing plant or warehouse. Instead, we may find that a facility has severe limitations on space, has old-fashioned hallways or hard-to-navigate pathways. Other times, trash routes cross production routes during operations, or break rooms are built so that employees have to bring their meals through a warehouse to get to them. As I previously mentioned, our starting points for deciding where to document a risk assessment are areas where repeated or persistent problems have occurred in the facility. Therefore, it's possible that when we go to identify the undesirable or unusual areas of the facility, we end up with overlapping problems. This is similar to performing root cause analyses that we covered in our CAPA video series, except here we are anticipating where the problems are likely to occur before they happen. So with this general framework to investigate what to write a risk assessment on, let's look at how to write one of these risk assessment documents. The first items we are going to need to write proper risk assessments for are the name of the person writing the assessment and the date on which the assessment was performed. Next, we need to identify the activity or area of the facility that the risk assessment applies to. If we are talking about an activity such as employees eating in the facility, it may be something that happens in many different areas, as would be the case where candy wrappers are found in the warehouse and on production lines. As another example, we may be conducting a risk assessment on a door which has been left unlocked multiple times, in which case the risk assessment only applies to a single entrance as opposed to conducting a risk assessment for security of the entire facility. After determining the activity or location, we need to identify what risk we are assessing, such as fraud or theft, production errors, worker injury or contamination of material. Lastly, we need to identify control measures in place to address the risk we are looking at. For a repeatedly unlocked door, controls could be a video camera near that area of the facility and routinely performing a security walkthrough and checking of all the doors. For production-related risks, measuring activities and good record keeping during production are the most common control measures and those should be identified on a risk assessment if they apply. In situations where we cannot identify our controls for identified risk areas or activity, we have come to a situation where we have a potentially serious problem, and it is here that we can look closer at likelihood and severity. In the first episode of this series, we describe likelihood as how likely a risk is to occur, and here where we are attempting to write a risk assessment, it is hopefully easier to understand what we mean by likelihood. For an unlocked door, the likelihood of someone entering the facility to steal materials is really dependent on where that door opens to. If it opens up to a busy street with high amounts of car traffic, it, it is much more likely that a theft may occur using that door, whereas a door that opens into a concealed alley that has a fence protecting it is not likely to be a place that someone is going to use to break into that facility. For a risk assessment of a difficult to clean piece of equipment, the likelihood of risk of contamination is tied to how often that equipment is used and how often it is checked. For a conveyor belt that is checked before and after production and is cleaned and sanitized every day, the likelihood of an occurrence is low. Where a specialty piece of equipment that's only brought out on special occasions and where it is tarped for months at a time, the likelihood of that equipment being dirty is high and it is difficult to properly clean and sanitize, the risk assessment for likelihood to contaminate products should be medium or high. Now let's look at how to determine the severity of an assessed risk. For many risk assessments and food establishments, we often associate severity with the likelihood of illness or death from food-related problems. 
That is what is meant by severity on a hazard analysis of a HACCP plan, for example. However, when we are performing a risk assessment in the facility, severity is a more general sense of how bad the problem would be in an instance where it does occur. For a roof leak, the severity of the problem is related to where the water is dripping, and so if the water is dripping near a boiler room, the severity is low since it is away from operations. If the dripping is occurring in a high traffic area or ingredient storage area, it may cause slippery conditions leading to a fall or injury and could cause contamination of a food product. That would be a medium to high severity event if it were to occur. We find that severity is often the most difficult aspect of a risk assessment to determine since it can be very subjective and different employees are likely to have different opinions on how severe an event would be should it occur. Included in this video is a link to examples of risk assessment forms you can download if you're going to perform your own risk assessment. Examples include a short risk assessment that may be used where risk is unlikely to ever change, as well as a more complex risk assessment template that can be used in a dynamic situation where risk may change at any time and where differing levels of control need to be applied. Communication is a very important step in the implementation of a risk assessment. After all, it doesn't matter much if an assessment is performed if no one in the facility even knows about it. We recommend writing at least one risk assessment for your facility as part of this video series, and then present that risk assessment to the safety team or senior management in the facility once that assessment is complete. In our next episode, we are going to discuss leadership in risk assessments and why it is so important that facility leadership be involved with the performing or reviewing of risk assessments in a food or food packaging operation. To learn more, visit our website and you'll find a full library of food safety training videos and resources. Follow us on LinkedIn and click the bell to be notified of new resources as they are released each week.